for 10 minutes the Truth, Freedom, Health with Dr. Shiva Ayadurai. Apologies if I haven't pronounced that correctly, but good to have you here, Dr. Shiva. Now, I will hand that time over to you now. Good, good afternoon. Can you guys see my presentation? I have a few slides. Everyone can yes, see it? Can. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Shiva Ayadurai. I'm an MIT PhD and a systems biologist. Um, I want to just jump right into this, um, given the uh, time uh, that we have, but I'm from the Movement for Truth from Health, which is a global movement which intersects activism with science and with health. Um, the key points I want to share with the committee here today is that understanding substantial equivalence is key to GMO safety. Now, the criteria that are used to determine substantial equivalence between, let's say, a GMO ingredient and a organic ingredient are the ones that actually determine substantial equivalence. GMO manufacturers are subjectively selecting these criteria. Now, systems biology, which is a relatively a new field, reveals that GMO manufacturers are actually rigging the system. Now, I'm going to share with you very briefly some uh, original research, published research in the peer-reviewed on soy, and then we're going to show that if GMO manufacturers had selected glutathione levels in, in soy, uh, which are about 250% difference between GMO soy and organic soy, GMO soy would never have been approved for distribution into the public. Now, the New Zealand government, unlike, unlike the European Union or the uh, United States, has an opportunity to use uh, technologies such as cytosol for GMO safety. So that's the background. Now, I'm an MIT PhD. I have four degrees from MIT. My interest has been in uh, science for a long time, as many people know. Um, MIT is a leading technology institution in the world. In 2003, MIT created a division, a new division called biological engineering. After I'd finished my PhD, I was this article occurred on the front page of MIT, which said "Buy Fresh by GMO." It was actually a sarcastic attack on "Buy Fresh by Local." MIT Technology Review is a leading one of the leading journals in the world. Now, what does this really mean? Well, for years there's been this pro-GMO and non-GMO debate. And as a scientist, I was very curious about what was really going on. And the fundamental issue that comes down to that the public needs to understand is, what is the difference between a non-GMO, right? Let's say an organic tomato in this case, and a GMO tomato. What is the actual difference? The GMO manufacturers say they're absolutely the same. Don't worry that both are red, both have a certain amount of water, both have a certain amount of protein. Everyone should allow it into distribution. It's like saying, what's the difference between Steve Bannon and the Hulk, you know? being facetious, there are fundamental differences. Now, for a long time, people have, have been pushed to say, don't worry, GMOs are no different than what people have been doing with hybridization of, uh, you know, uh, 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 um, in this case, corn. You take corn A, corn B, you mix it, you get corn C. And the theory is that uh, when you do a GMO, it is no different, but the reality is a substantial difference because you're doing a point mutation in a particular organism, which can have massive ramifications in the complex systems at the molecular systems level. The issue is what are those ramifications? What is the difference between genetic and organic? Now, most of the uh, substantial equivalence, the way that people determine the equality between a non-GMO and GMO is based on a 1976 guidance that's used throughout the world, uh, signed into law by Gerald Ford on how do you determine the equivalence between two medical devices, which was then used for GMO um, uh, organisms. In this law, which is also what New Zealand uh, it likely will follow, the manufacturers are the ones who identify the characteristics of difference. So if they say organic tomato and non-organic tomato, they say, well, we've selected the how red it is, how much water it has, and how much protein, therefore they're equivalent. But are they truly equivalent? Well, anyway, so the criteria matter. In our work, we looked at soy, 99, 95% of the soy in the United States is genetically engineered. So what is the difference? When you look at over nearly 7,000 experiments done in 184 scientific institutions in 23 countries, and you distill that down, first of all, you find out all plants, not only soy, have this very particular metabolic cycle. And you can see right here, methionine, biosynthesis, methylation. In this process, formaldehyde is produced, but it gets detoxified in the natural process because of proper levels of glutathione. We understood all of these molecular pathways, organized them, and we published this in, in agricultural sciences. No one had any issues with it. Um, several years later, we did another publication. We took this model and we used our technology, Cytosol, which was my PhD work at MIT, 
which allows us to model complex molecular systems, which has been published extensively. It's an entire collaboratory. And what we found was that glutathione levels in the normal conditions are stay are in steady state and formaldehyde drops. And that's what you would ex expect in normal plants because they have a normal detox process. And we did sensitivity analysis to show this. In the, and that was published in the American Journal of Plant Sciences. Then we introduced oxidative stress to a plant, a drought, those kind of conditions. And what you find under this condition, when you do the same thing, is glutathione levels will drop because the plant is using glutathione to absorb uh, formaldehyde. And formaldehyde levels will rise. Same thing here. And then finally, what we did was what we said, what happens when a plant undergoes genetic engineering, which is what happens with Roundup Ready Soy that Monsanto does. We found four enzymes that are perturbed in this process, including hydrogen peroxide, which is a separate thing. What, what's fascinating is when you put all this together with genetic modification, what you get is you get in the non-GMO, formaldehyde is normally detoxified, but formaldehyde levels rise. Why? Because the glutathione levels have dropped because the plant is under constant steady state oxidative stress. That's what this research revealed. And this was published in the Journal of Agricultural Sciences. This is when the world woke up and people, you know, some scientists in the European Union attacked us. They said, this is just a model, nothing to see here. This is nonsense. Well, we were very fortunate. We predicted in our work that, that the, in, in an organic soy plant, there would be 9.7 levels of glutathione. And, and in a Roundup Ready, there would be 3.9, substantially less. Well, people said, this is just a model. We were very fortunate that the work of people in Leeds had also shown in vivo in a greenhouse, the same effect. You see, so we had, but however, our work shows a mechanistic reason why this is occurring. This was also published in the American Journal of Plant Sciences. Bottom line is this, as I said, substantial equivalence is a key. And New Zealand has a huge opportunity, unlike all of these, frankly, primitive countries, which didn't want to follow, to actually use technology such as Cytosol to determine GMO safety. So our position is that equivalence is what matters. Who is determining equivalence? Right now in the United States and other countries, it's the fox watching the hen house. The GMO manufacturers are determining equivalence by the criteria they select. New Zealand has a huge opportunity to lead the way in understanding GMOs by using this approach. This is the latest advancements in systems biology. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a very, very good submission. We have uh, two minutes left if there's any questions. Steve. Yeah, and just to expand, there's a super submission. You got it a lot across in a short space of time. Just to expand on what you're telling us here is that um, you don't think the concept of substantial equivalence is completely bunkum. It just needs to be evaluated by independent scientists, not by the companies creating the novel organism that they want to get approval for. Yeah, substantial equivalence originally, uh, uh, Steve, was created for medical devices, which it maybe had 10 or 20 parts. In the United States, a medical device company, let's say they were making a stethoscope, wanted to get it out to the public, right? Let's, it would take seven years to get approval by the FDA. But let's say they changed just the color of the stethoscope. It would take another seven years. Yeah. So Congress basically said, if they're substantially equivalent, we should fast track it, yeah. right? But what criteria were selected? That same body of guidance was used for GMOs. But a genetically engineered... <laughs> Uh, organism is far more complex than about 20 parts in a stethoscope, you see? So, but then, yes. But then, therefore, we shouldn't really apply it to biology at all. Well, it shouldn't be. But if you are going to even use that, what criteria are being used, you see? Now, the approach of Cytosol, which understands all the mechanistic understanding, you can use that to tease out what are substantially different or what are substantially equivalent. Because it is at the molecular level we need to go at, not at some meta level. Well, does is it color red? Does it have the same amount of water? You must do the molecular systems analysis, and based on that, and it, to your point, it must be done independently, not by the fox watching the house, not Monsanto deciding what's appropriate. Or now Monsanto's under Bayer, uh, as as many of you know, because of the criticism they received, they put their company under a nice uh, aspirin company <laughs> to rebrand themselves. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dr. Shiva. A very Thank insightful you, submission. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up.